never know what the sculpture is going to look like. I only know what it is that I want to carve. And then as I begin the carving, it starts to show itself. I was a cabinet maker and I owned our own, uh, my own cabinet making company in, uh, in Rodden, Quebec. And ultimately uh, that didn't work out. And uh, through that uh, business's failure, I met a carver. And uh, he was a chisel and mallet uh, carver, but uh, through his friendship, uh, I met another carver who was a chainsaw carver. When we came out west uh, and moved to Fernie, that's when I realized that uh, I had, one, had gotten good enough uh, at it uh, that I could uh, turn pro. And here in Fernie, it just like uh, seemed to click right away. It just felt right. We came when I, once I had a job, so we knew that financially, at least we would be able to hold on, make do with my job until he get established. But uh, he, like his career and his sculptures took off so quickly from the beginning that it was like the fears that we had and the concerns because the, it was, okay, we're gonna try this, let's see if it works. And you know, it just worked. Every time I do a carving, I feel like it's a learning process and I'm always happy with the result, but I know that there's another one that's better ahead every time. Being a carver's wife is, um, it's, it's, it's great, but um, you have a lot of dust at home, a lot of sawdust. It's amazing that even after I, you know, wipe myself off before I go home, there's always a trail of it around. And it's hilarious because my wife has actually kind of gotten used to it now, but I still get grief for it and a part of me uh, <laughs> gets pleasure from that. <laughs>